Hey guys, Kerry Werner here in Bend, Oregon. And coming straight off of the best of both, I raced that yesterday. And so I figured I'd give you guys a little race recap. This is Becca's doggy. Ellie. What's up, Ellie? <laughs> so it's the Saturday before the Oregon Trail gravel grinder and I figured like the best of both would be a good little warm up. Uh, I flew here on Thursday. The best of both is this uh, really unique race. There's a, a transition category and a single steed category. So you can use one bike or you can bring multiple bikes. Kind of based around like pavement and single track and then this year there was a bunch of gravel in it. I had my Kona Libre fitted out with the Fox Rad Fork. It's 50 mils of suspension and a 40 millimeter offset. And then some big 2.1 Maxxis Paces, 650 B wheels. Uh, and I thought that'd be really sick for the 16 mile section of single track at the end of the race. And so yeah, that was my that was my setup for the race. Friday we went over to Crow's Feet and picked up packets uh, and got all squared away on that front. And then Saturday morning, woke up pretty early because it was 8.30 a.m. start, uh, loaded the car and headed up the Cascade Lake Highway up towards Mount Bachelor, uh, pulled off at a snow park and that's where it all went down. So we started out and pretty immediately there was a group of four that formed on the front. We were kind of ripping these like forest service roads for a while. Uh, one guy flatted out of our front group and then it was just three of us. It was Dylan Caldwell and Justin Hurd. And we stayed together the whole time. We were ripping gravel uh, earlier in the race. Um, I think up until mile 20, that's when we hit the first transition zone. Uh, it was a little confusing that first time through, but uh, once we got that figured out, it was good for the, the next time we hit that same exact transition zone. But we hit pavement and then went straight back into gravel, uh, had a good gradual gravel climb into a big descent. The whole time, there wasn't anything super demanding. We were just hitting these really gradual pitches, and so uh, the three of us were kind of staying together. We were kind of just pushing threshold on the front. Uh, nothing even technical to really separate us. So Dylan dropped off. I looked back and he was just totally gone, and I thought maybe he had flatted, I didn't know it. And then the next time I pulled through, he was back on the group, so he must have stopped for a pee or something. But then right after that, we hit a power line section that was really gnarly. It was maybe four miles of just super steep undulating terrain. And uh, that was kind of where the first like big efforts came. Not that we were attacking each other, but the terrain dictated that we go hard. After that, we jumped on pavement and then hit a little loop by Elk Lake. And that's where we hit the kind of middle feed right at mile 58. And this is where things got really interesting in the race. So Justin didn't stop at the aid station and kept going. Caleb and I filled up bottles, grabbed a couple snacks, and then got back on the road after him. And from this point, um, for the next 25 miles, we're on pavement. It took us a solid bit of time to catch back up to Justin. I think it was about 10 minutes at like 300 watts, which doesn't sound like a huge bunch of power, but we were now at altitude. So from that aid, it was 5,000 feet up to 5,500 feet. Um, and so that was a little bit of an effort, but we caught back up to Justin and kind of rolled for a bit together there. Checking out the snow. We're pretty high up. The Mount Bachelor area has gotten a bunch of snow even as recently as last week. So we kept rolling together until we got to like the major pitches of this climb up to Mount Bachelor. And that's where Justin got on the front and started putting power down. For Caleb and I, who got dropped by Justin, that was a 320 
watt effort for about 20 minutes. The whole time we were climbing higher and higher, so this was uh, an effort from about 5,500 feet up to 6,500 feet. So for me, coming from the East Coast, it just kind of like, as we kept getting higher and higher, it just kind of felt like something was just getting constricted and tighter and tighter. It also didn't help that with the fork and the, the tires, it just felt like I was kind of dragging a boat anchor back there. So while my setup was sick for a lot of the off-road sections, this is where it kind of really hurt me. Once Justin dropped us, Dylan and I crested the kind of the top of that pavement climb and we just got into super tuck mode. I felt bad because I couldn't do as, as much of the work on the front. My big tires were kind of holding me back from like really uh, pinning that downhill. Uh, and I, I, was, I was hopeful that we would get some time back on Justin. Uh, after the race, I actually learned that he kind of linked up with another person in the transition race and was actually working with them <laughs> as they went down the hills. So Justin got about a minute on us. By the time he hit the, that same transition zone, we hit that same transition zone twice, uh, except right out of it, we hit this 16 mile section of single track. And we saw him enter the single track as we were coming into the transition. So I was okay with this. I thought that I could close that minute gap down. Being on this setup that was like primed for single track, we started climbing and we kept climbing for like 30 minutes. So I wasn't able to whittle that gap down. I got away from Caleb almost immediately when we started the single track, but make that little bit of more effort to shut down the gap to Jerd. So that's where I finished in second place. Uh, I kept my head up the whole time on the single track looking for him, but I just never really saw him. After the race, hit the after party at Crow's Feet. Uh, we got some tacos and beer, and uh, then we did awards. So unfortunately, this is the last year that the best of both is happening, which is a bummer because this is quite a unique race and I really like the, the style and the format of blending all the disciplines of kind of riding into one race and, and using one bike for it. You know, if I was a local, I definitely would have brought a mountain bike and done the transition race. That would have been really fun. Instead, flew out here with my Libre with the big suspension fork. And now that the best of both is over, I'm gonna throw the rigid fork back on for a super quick speedy setup for Oregon Trail, which starts on Wednesday. So this race finished Sunday, 92 mile race. It's about five and a half hour race time. Pretty good effort. Uh, we normalized power was like 300 watts for five and a half hours. So pretty, pretty spicy little effort on Saturday. Now we got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday to chill out and recover. And then we start the Oregon Trail five day gravel stage race on Wednesday. I'll be doing race updates throughout that week for uh, the Oregon Trail, which I'm really excited about. I did it last year and I felt a little underprepared last year. So this year I'm feeling like I'm in a little bit better of a place. It's gonna be a fun week too. We camp every night. Uh, it's just like the Oregon Trail is a vibe. It's really fun. It's like a traveling thing. We do point to point races. Uh, they have tent city set up when we get there and then everybody hangs out after the race. There's lots of cool camaraderie and I'm bringing a hula hoop this year. I'm gonna see who can hoop. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard hula hooping was until Chris, Becca's boyfriend's neighbor, just gave me one. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks and it's all in the hips. So that's the race recap for best of both. See you guys the next videos for Oregon Trail, Gravel Grinder. Thanks for watching.